This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we're going to look at the sudo command. And with great power of the sudo command comes great responsibility. You must take great care with what I'm about to show you. So I'm going to bring up my terminal window, make the font a little bit larger, and maximize it. Let's take a look at our users folder. This is where all the home folders are stored. And pretending that Hugh has some documents we need to see in his home folder, we could attempt to look at them with the ls-l command in recursive so that we could see all the subdirectories. And we type out his home folder name, which is Hugh. But notice that we get a whole bunch of permission denied messages. This is because even though we're an administrator, we don't have the rights or permissions to get inside of Hugh's home folder and look inside those subfolders. So how can we fix this? Well, that's where the sudo command comes in. If we say sudo ls-lr on Hugh, it will ask us for a password. Now you might be tempted to try to type in a system administrator or root password, but that won't work. What we're needing to type here is the local administrator password. So I'm going to type in my password. And notice that we don't get those permission errors again. Instead, we actually get a listing of all those subfolders in Hue's home folder. So that's the beauty of the sudo command, is if you are a member of the proper group and have permissions to do sudo commands, then you can execute a command temporarily as if you were the root user which can do anything on the system at all. It's very powerful for troubleshooting or fixing problems. For example, if we take a look at my LAdmin home folder, note that there is a 501 here in the long listing where there should be the name of a group, and that group should be staff, just like it is for Hue. So to fix that, I need to change the group ownership, but that's one of the things that really needs to be done with system user permissions, especially if it was somebody else's home folder. Now, it happens to be my own home folder, so technically I don't need to sudo this command, but it's going to demonstrate what you might necessarily need to do if you're working on somebody else's home folder. So don't worry about this command right now. It's just the change ownership command, and we're going to set staff as the group. We do need to make it recursive, so there's a dash R in there. And we want this to operate only on the ladmin folder and subfolders, or directory and subdirectories, depending upon what terminology you like. Now if I do an ls-l, we can see that the ladmin folder is now properly set to have a group of staff on there. So those are a couple of examples of the sudo command in action. There's another couple of things that I want to show you about sudo that is really nice. For one thing, the first time I had to type the password when I sudoed, but the second time I didn't, and that's because there's sort of a timeout of about five minutes. At five minutes, I would have to type a password again if I had not been executing sudo commands. So it doesn't make you type the password over and over and over again. Instead, the system assumes that if you're doing a sudo command right after a sudo command that you're the same person. Also, if we wanted to go into a shell and just do a whole bunch of sudo commands at once without having to type sudo, we could go into something called the root shell with a command called sudo s. Note that the prompt completely changes. No longer does it have the host name followed by a present working directory path followed by the username. Instead, it tells us that we're in the bash shell and gives us a hash mark or pound sign as the shell prompt. This is a warning that you are now operating as root. In fact, if we type our who am I command, we see that it says that we are user root. So this is a very dangerous place to be because you can remove things accidentally or change files accidentally very easily. And I'm going to deliberately do that right now to show you how easy it is to do something like that. So I'm going to type rm, which is remove. I'm going to make it recursive, and this is the dangerous part. Making any remove command execute with root privileges and recursive is very tricky. And I'm going to say hue. 
and it doesn't even complain. It just totally removed Hugh's home folder. It's gone. So it is not in the listing anymore. So again, with great power comes great responsibility. Be very careful with your sudo commands and know what you're doing before you do it. But other than that, it is an awesome tool for use in troubleshooting and maintaining your Mac systems.